how important it is to make your first game something small. But Just this is so small. important that this time we're going to dedicate the entire My first game will be small. I recently thought about my big project, this ultimate sophisticated multiplayer party game with loads of content and I came to the conclusion that it might be better to create a small game first, release that game, learn things along the way and get some game dev and publishing experience. You probably heard of the term minimum viable product already. Basically, you create a version of your product that only implements the bare minimum functionality. No fancy scene transitions, sophisticated settings or anything else that isn't absolutely necessary. That way, in case you should lose motivation, you still have a complete product to show off or if the core gameplay turns out to be trash, you didn't waste tons of time on creating a save feature, character customization or remappable controls. And when your MVP is done, you can still add all those crazy features. So, my new cute little small game project is... No No Game. Working title. Wait, 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 I, I know what you're thinking right now. No, no, I have no shame. This is my no, no game. All right, let me explain. You might have already seen or even played these Japanese puzzle games. No, no, not those ones. Called Picross, Gridless or No, No Gram. They recently gained lots of popularity as smartphone apps. You basically have to fill out cells in a grid or leave them empty with the help of some numbers on the sides. The numbers indicate how many unbroken filled lines are in any given column or row and how long these lines are. It's fun! And there are no games like that on Steam. Okay, maybe there are some, but not, not many, I swear. And I feel like if well done at least two or maybe even three people would buy the game. So, it's a level-based game with an already well-established concept and I really feel like I can finish this game. But just to be sure, let's create an MVP first. Let's start with a simple menu and program a basic random nonogram generator. I currently don't have any way of showing the number hints on the sides right now, so I just made an onogram display the solution by default for now. Now let's create the grid. I've decided to make the grid a mesh, so it will look sharp no matter what. But it's hard. Upgrade. 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 Go back. Oh, uh, wait, yeah. Yay! Let's take a look at the symbols the player can place inside a cell. A cell can be blank, filled, a cross or a triangle. The level is 1 once all filled cells of the solution are filled out in the input grid as well. And there must not be any additional filled cells as well, obviously. The cross can be used by the player to indicate that a certain cell can't be filled in the solution. And the triangles can be placed as the player wishes, kind of as a way to keep notes in the grid. Now, the next thing are the numbers on the sides, providing the player with information about the required solution. Now let's implement a way to read stored levels. So the levels are basically this text file with zeros and ones in them. Yeah. Do not judge anything that works, okay? Because you're not working, you're watching this video right now. To make the grid easier to read, let's make every fifth line bold. Now let's add some camera zooming movement and center the camera by default over the visible area. And also the crosses are placed automatically if enough cells are colored black. Now, how about some choose? Wow! 
to be honest, I don't know if this breaks the minimalistic style of the game. What's your opinion on the particle effects? The probably most important quality of life addition to the whole game. If an unbroken line exists that corresponds to a number indicator on the top or left side, the number should be grey instead of black. This is seriously one of the biggest improvements because it reduces the information the player has to keep in mind while playing. But the information is still visible in case the player should need it. Of course, there are, there are no bugs and this works flawlessly. And I think it would be cool if the player was rewarded with some colored pixel art image each time they finish a level. So that's it, that's the MVP of No No Game. One playable handmade level or randomly generated 10x10 levels. No settings, no saving, no high scores. However, this was only the first devlog. I plan on creating some sort of level selection feature, saving, obviously some settings and some other nice additions as well. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.